Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, a few videos back, I talked about M17, a codec 2 based protocol for digital comms on ham radio. Now, before we get into the video, I just wanted to talk about something, and that's the misconception that digital modes on ham radio require the use of the internet. Now, while it may be true that all ham radio digital modes have internet linking support, you do not have to use digital modes via the internet. They do work point to point over RF with no internet involved. Now that goes for all digital modes such as NXDN, DMR, DSTAR, Yosu Fusion, and that's along with M17. In my last M17 video, I showed you that you can use your computer directly connected with your radio to use the M17 mode of communication. This allows your computer to do all the encoding and decoding. So what about if you didn't want to use your computer for M17 encoding and decoding? Well, then you could use something like this. Now this is called Module 17, a project purely designed to interface with any 9600 board capable radio. Now I know what you're thinking, why does it need to be 9600 board capable radio? Well, technically it has nothing to do with board rate. It's just that 9600 board rate capable radios have the FM emphasis and pre-emphasis turned off, meaning the received and transmitted audio is as is, with no filtering applied internally within the radio. Therefore, it's possible that some FM transceivers will support M17, even if it doesn't state that it's got a 9600 board rate port. You just need to make sure that the full FM audio is being passed through without filtering or any modification. With the Module 17, all you need to do is add a Kenwood style two pin microphone a power source via the DC input or via USB-C, and then just a cable between the 9-pin serial style connector off to your radio. Pinout information is located on the Module 17 GitHub page, so you can make your own cables. Now I'm using Module 17 with a Yaesu FTM300, and making the cable for this was actually quite easy to do. In terms of pins and wires, it's just a case of audio in and out, and then a way to control the PTT line. Now onboard buttons allow the user to navigate through the menu, changing items like mic gain, offset and call sign data. Now all of this is displayed on the 1.3 inch OLED screen. An additional external speaker connection is available, indicated where I have attached the red and black wires. The rotary control next to these wires control the output volume. Now if you don't have a Kenwood speaker mic, then something like this will do to get you started. These are like security style earpiece mics with a PTT button in line. Now these fit perfectly into the socket and they don't actually sound too bad. The external speaker that I wired up was just an old vehicle communication speaker. These are also pretty cheap on Amazon or eBay and they sound pretty decent too. For those of you that don't like bare PCBs laying around, then you can either mount the PCB in a box or if you have a 3D printer, you can print a 3D case like this. Now luckily I have a couple of 3D printers and printing the two halves and the buttons only took a few hours. However, I do think I need to play with the settings on my 3D printer as the outside surface does look a little rough. I believe this is something to do with the raft setting. Anyhow, with it all fixed together, it becomes a nice little compact unit, safely covering the PCB while exposing the connectors, screen and buttons. Now to help you visualize how the module 17 connects with your radio and microphone, take a look at this slide. As the module 17 sends and receives audio from your radio and controls the PTT, you do not need a microphone on your radio. In fact, it's probably best you unplug the mic on the radio itself. Transmitting and receiving encoded and decoded M17 audio is all done via the speaker mic that you plug into the M17 module. The only item missing from this slide is a power source, but as mentioned before, you can either use the barrel DC in or a USB-C cable on the module 17. Of course, your transceiver won't need its own power source too. With everything connected, it was time to make a QSO. Now with the help of a fellow amateur radio enthusiast, Jonathan M0JSX, we had an M17 contact via RF on the two meter handband. 
uh, M0JSX, M0JSX, this is M0DQW, over. M0DQW, this is M0JSX, how are you? Yeah, uh, good afternoon, Jonathan. I'm very well, thank you. It's um, nice to be able to test out M17. It uh, seems to be um, working okay, quite well. It's kind of interesting how I've got it connected up. I'm using an FDM 300 uh, with the Module 17 board, uh, which is soon going to be released on AliExpress, I will add nicely. Um, how are you using M17? What's, what's your setup there? Uh, go ahead. M0 JSX, M0 DQW. M0 DQW, uh, this is M0 JSX returning. Okay, Max, uh, my setup this way uh, is I'm using the Yaesu S8900 uh, using a DigiRig as the intermediary thing. Uh, and then with my uh, computer, I'm using the M17 uh, GUI software that uh, I used a video on uh, not long ago. Uh, so that's the setup this way, and then just using a very uh, USB headset plugged into my laptop to access the Yaesu and the it seems to work. There's a little bit of break up on your last over, uh, but, uh, but it's absolutely a, a fine otherwise. It's uh, certainly more than good enough to do with the whole of QSO. Um, zero DQW, M or JSX. Yeah, M0 JSX, M0 DQW. Yeah, well, I think, you know, considering the distance between us and sort of signal levels, um, I think it's working quite well. Uh, definitely seems to be working and as an, for an experimental uh, digital modulation uh, I think it's great what the guys have done over at uh, OpenRTX and the uh, M17 project so yeah this is what ham radio is all about experimenting although there's probably if there's anybody listening to us on 145.675 or at least if they can hear the signal, they're probably wondering what it is. But anyway, uh, we'll never know. All right, Jonathan, well, thank you very much for the contact. And uh, it's great to work M17 over RF, just to uh, demonstrate how well this works. All right, 73s, and I'll speak to you again soon. Take care, Jonathan, M0JSX, M0DQW. And uh, yeah, if someone is uh, listening to the modulation on that over rig, they're going to be uh, scratching their heads as to what it could be. But uh, yeah, nice to see that it is working. Obviously, the guys at the M17 pod and uh, OpenRTX have done a really good job. So uh, I'll ask the M3, catch you soon, and uh, nice to uh, work on M17. Zero DQW, this is at zero JMX. 73. Now, Jonathan was using M17 Tool GUI application on his computer and using a DigiRig to interface to his 7900 radio. For me, all of the encoding and decoding of M17 was done by that little grey box, Module 17. Now, Jonathan M0JSX does have his own YouTube channel if you don't already know about it, and I believe he recorded our QSO, so if you want to hear what I sounded like being received on M17, then go and take a look on Jonathan's YouTube channel. If the video is not out yet, make sure to subscribe and wait for him to release the video. Now this is the cable that I made that goes between module 17 and my FTM 300 radio. On one end, it's a DB9 serial connector and the other is the connector which plugs into the back of the radio. Obviously that connector will differ depending on the model of radio that you have. Now, at the time of making this video, LilyGo have started producing these boards, costing around £29. They are selling them on AliExpress. However, this first run sold out extremely quickly. Now, I'll leave a link below so you can check back to see if they have them in stock again. Hopefully, it won't be too much longer. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. And until the next one, take care.